So, I mean, amazing to meet you, Neil. I was wondering, a good place to start might be kind of what kind of inspired you to go into the kind of gaming world and what can you kind of tell us about uh, Godzilla and Off the Grid and kind of what you've been working on? Uh, well, I, I come out of 3D graphics um, before I got into filmmaking. I was, I was an animator and I've always been obsessed with, with 3D created environments. So I like games, but I, I really love as an artist building 3D places that people can go and, and really that's what games are. You drop them into this environment. So when I was uh, directing films, always in the back of my mind, I was thinking at some point I wanted to work on a film, on a game. Because it, it was like I wasn't scratching that itch with, with only the filmmaking side of what I was doing. Uh, and so I, it's been very prevalent in my mind for quite a few years. And then uh, over a year ago, um, Richard Morgan, the science fiction author who's also involved with this game, contacted me and he was like, we're, a lot of what we're doing is sort of influenced by Elysium. And do you feel like you'd be interested in working on a game? So I went to I went to Kiev and I went to Frankfurt where Gensela is based, and I got to meet people and I just felt like you know that this this it, it felt like a, a cyberpunk dystopia and all of the 3D environmental stuff that I felt like I wanted to work on and it just felt like a good a good fit. And uh, how different is making a game to making a film? Is it? like a full chalk and cheese kind of situation or is there any kind of kind of crossover? I mean, there, there's sort of two components to that answer because on one hand, it's quite similar. It, it reminds me of post-production. So, you know, working in visual effects and sitting in dark rooms and designing things and modeling them and rendering them. It's like there, it's very, that part is very similar. Where it's very different is in the knowledge and sort of background know-how of how games are, themselves are made. Like, what do players want? What doesn't work? What does work? How do you make the experience more entertaining? How do you give the player like as much agency over everything they're doing as you can? Like, none of those are things you run into in filmmaking. So, the way you execute them is similar, but the theory is not at all similar. So, I've, I've definitely spent a year kind of starting to understand how game designers think and what theoretically makes for fun gameplay in something that is a multiplayer shooter like this. And so I've seen some of the artwork around here of Off the Grid, but what can you kind of say about, you know, the concept of the game and kind of what it's kind of bringing to the to the market basically? Well, I mean, the art the artwork is very reflective of what the, the vibe of the game is, which is dystopian science fiction. So it, it feels accurate to the game that we're making. And, um, you know, I think when you look at Apex Legends or Valorant, uh, or a lot, a lot of stuff out there, Fortnite, it's, this is more serious in the way that it's rendered, in the way that it's portrayed. Like, you know, they may, they may all have a similar shooter battle royale sort of vibe to them, but I, I would say that this is a little bit more, uh, older skewing science fiction in the way that it's presented and that, and that, and that it feels. And uh, obviously people know you for your films, you know, the great stories that you've told. What is there in terms of kind of narrative backing up the game? I, I take it there's not going to be like a kind of campaign type thing, or is there? No, I mean, definitely the focus is to, to try to make a really a super entertaining battle royale. That's the goal. But there's so much... Uh, world building that has been done and, and so much world building that's been sort of fleshed out that there are lots of interesting narrative journeys that you could go on within what's been built. The question is trying to uh, find a way to bring that into something like a battle royale which is very complicated in a way that will be positive to players and so like that's the phase that we're in now. And uh, in terms of the gameplay itself, what kind of battle royale is it? Like, what kind of weapons and options do people have to kind of try and get the edge over each other? 
Well, I mean, all of them are pretty standard in the sense that, I mean, th th these weapons would be real world, slightly twisted science fiction versions of real world weapons. So again, Elysium is a very good example of that. But the principles of all of the Battle Royals are kind of similar, right? Like you're firing some kind of weapon at people. So it, it, it will follow that model. And is it going to be, you mentioned Apex earlier, is it going to be kind of a character, like you have different characters or you just have your one kind of avatar? No, you'll you'll create your own, your own character. Uh, I only ask because uh, the artwork which is on the side of here, uh, I, rec I recognize the person that's in it, but I can't, <laughs> I swear it's an actor that I've seen in other things. You shouldn't recognize the person. I, I think it looks like Stephen Graham, the actor, but maybe that's just, yeah. Maybe, no, I, maybe. So. Yeah. Uh, I can speak to the concept artist and see, but I'm pretty sure that it's it's all generic. <laughs> maybe maybe I've just insulted Stephen Graham by saying he looks like a... Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll stand next to it and look at his image and see. Um, I'm kind of... How kind of long of a project has this been for you? Have you? Has it been kind of years in the background before it was announced, kind of thing? No, I mean for me, I've been I've been working on this for about a year, um, but the team has been on it for longer than that. I mean, you know, I, I kind of joined them about a year ago, um, and we still have at least a year to go. So. And, and how do you think it's changed, kind of, since you came into it? What has kind of been the stamp that you've put onto it, or what kind of you've contributed to it? I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely a case of, I, I would say, skewing it more towards stuff that, like, if, you, if you've seen the films that I've made, it's, like, it, it's, it's moving it more in the direction of that. So it would be more of this kind of sun-bleached cyberpunk in a, in a very real and gritty world setting. Um, and have you still been kind of developing films and other ideas in the background, or has this been kind of your core use of your time for that year? Uh, it's kind of, I mean, it sort of ebbs and flows. Ba basically, I guess it would even out to sort of 50-50, you know. Um, uh, but it's uh, OTG and Godzilla is very prevalent in, in what I'm doing. I mean, it's, at, at the moment, it's, you know, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of brain power. And uh, what kind of, you mentioned kind of, it's probably still got another year away on it. How are you kind of envisioning the launch have you got kind of ideas of how to kind of get it out to people like as quick as possible and stuff like that you mean like alphas yeah. yeah i think it's too early to know yeah we're still figuring it out yeah and uh obviously the like, reason a lot of these battle royales are so successful is that they're kind of like what's the word yeah. in perpetuity like they kind of keep updating all the time so do you have to kind of think well, not hold ideas back necessarily, but kind of you're thinking three steps ahead. So, oh, we could add this later. We could add this later. You know, it's it's sort of I think it's a combination of both because the analogy to some degree would be like saying I'm making one film, but I'm, I'm holding things back because I'm going to put some of the best ideas in the sequel and then the sequel after the sequel. And it's like it's a really dangerous way to think because if the film isn't successful, it's like it's irrelevant, right? And then you didn't use all of your ideas. So I think we have to do our best to try to make it be successful. And then if, if players adopt it, the world is structured in a way where there's so much other stuff you can pull from that you can keep going. So that, that's why this this massive sort of narrative world base has been created in order for both of those to happen. And uh, have you said yet kind of which platforms that it's going to be on, or is that kind of TBC? It should theoretically be on PC and consoles. Yeah. It should be on both. Cool. I only really play PC. I have a PS5. But, yeah. What are kind of some of the games that have kind of shaped your tastes over the years? And what are some of your like favorite gaming experiences that you've had just on like a personal level? I would say number one for me is Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, and, and it goes back to what I was saying before about creating a 3D environment that you just drop people into. There's something so captivating about that. So I, 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 the pinnacle for me would be like GTA V or something, something in that in that world. Um, other, other, I mean, I find I find the game control very visually and stylistically sort of amazing. Um, and then there's games like the 2017 Doom, just in terms of pace and like playability, like how intense it is, is super cool. The energy that it has. Um, 
mean, yeah, those are the more those are the, those are the more contemporary ones that I think have had an effect on me. Obviously, there's way older stuff like Doom, 1993, was had as much or more of an effect on me than some of the films that I was seeing then, which was around the same time as Jurassic Park and like Terminator 2. You mentioned the kind of idea of you know not trying to kind of plan too far ahead and kind of putting the cart before the horse and stuff like that. It's interesting. It just kind of sparked in my head then that like correct me if I'm wrong but all of your films so far have been kind of one-offs you haven't kind of gone back to the well very much for like sequels and stuff has that kind of been by design or have you got kind of ideas of like ways you would follow them up I, I would I mean creatively I would love to go back to District 9 and Elysium so I it's it, yeah I mean I, I have no I have no problem doing that you know like I, I want to go back to those worlds a uh, colleague of mine was interviewing uh, Sholto Copley the other day actually for he's done a film with Idris Elba where they're, they're fighting a, a I want to say a lion <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, which is cool uh, I imagine you would kind of you've already collaborated with him more than once right is he someone that you would kind of see yourself going back to again and again yeah I mean if you, if you, you can't make a District 9 sequel without Sholto you know, that, would, that, would, that wouldn't work you know? so, so yeah absolutely that's one of those tough ones, though, where you've almost like painted yourself into a corner with the ending of District Nine. It's like, can you bring him back from now? Or, or I don't know how would you. It's hard to see where how he would come back. No, there's we, we have ideas. Oh, I'd love to see that. And uh, the other thing that I think is kind of lots of people kind of wish had happened would have been your uh, Alien film. Has there kind of been any chance of like a return to that project, or is it completely shelved? Yeah, I don't know. It makes no difference. I assume it's dead. But uh, to bring it back to uh, to the game, um, I was wondering: is there kind of because it's got your involvement, can people expect to kind of see nods and kind of Easter eggs to stuff that you've done before, or is it kind of like a completely kind of different world to kind of what you've done before? You'll have to play it to see. I won't give it away. And uh, something I was wondering about the other day, actually, is uh, anything where it's like a, a multiplayer thing, where there's an element of you kind of have to learn the game, learn the ropes. You kind of run into quite quickly the situation of like, well, how do you balance it for kind of? Because there will be those people who, you know, jump in on day one or in alpha if there's an alpha and get really good at it really fast. How do you? Is that something you're kind of concerned about at the back of your mind, that like we need to keep it kind of approachable? I mean, like matchmaking, yeah, yeah. balancing, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of that is a... Matchmaking is a technical problem, right? Where you, you can skew the selection program. It can, be, it can be algorithmic. There are ways to figure that out and then just have algorithms balance it. So it's, I mean, it's definitely something that you talk about a lot, but, you know, there's, it's, there's no human intervention in it. It's like computer servers analyzing a bunch of data and then trying to balance. And uh, you kind of keep coming back to the idea of, you know, 3D worlds that people can inhabit. It makes me wonder, like, kind of where do you stand on the whole metaverse thing and do you kind of see, you know, things like VR becoming that kind of mass adopted kind of thing or where do you think kind of the future is for that kind of stuff? I, I'm sort of split because on one hand, something like a photoreal version of the metaverse is like one of the most interesting things to me for exactly the same reason that I got into making this game, which is building a 3D environment of, of a non-real place. So I absolutely love the idea of if there was a way to photorealistically sort of recreate the world. It's why I love Google Earth so much. Like photo, the, the photogrammetry in Google Earth is like astonishing, right? Like. If you brought that down to sort of like a, a one centimeter or one millimeter resolution, it would be insane. But at the same time, I just don't really see a universe in which people are wearing VR headsets. Like it just, it's not a mass adoptable thing. It's like a weird niche thing. If it's not as easy as an iPhone or a glasses like you're wearing, people are never gonna do it on mass. So I would be in the I would be in the very small percentage of people that would be like highly interested in in um, journeying through a 3D re-representation re of, of Earth or whatever the metaverse 
you know, artistic version of that is. But I do think that I'm in the, the minority. So then it becomes like, well, how do you portray that on a two-dimensional screen compellingly, like where it makes economic sense and it, it, it makes sense in a an ecosystem where people use it the way that they use the rest of the internet. I'm sure it'll be sol it'll be solved. Like it, it, it seems like a natural progression. The only thing I'm really weary about is the interface between how the human and the metaverse is connected. You know what I mean? I think that's really the thing that's up for grabs. I think ultimately it'll be like it'll be like retinal lenses, or it'll be. Uh, like brain computer interfaces, like some sort of VCI, or basically uh, intercepting the visual or audio nerves, you know, like as, as they're traveling to the brain and just re, re signaling them with something else. But it, it, it will have to be very easy to use. Yeah. That's so interesting. I think we're just about out of time. But uh, one final thing just kind of, we've spoken a lot about 3D worlds and this world in particular. What's kind of like the overarching kind of feeling or the vibe of the world of off the grid if you had to kind of sum it up kind of in a matter of a few words the vibe of it would definitely be um that, that the game is set at the moment where the age-old cyberpunk trope of mega corporations being more powerful than governments the game takes place at, at the, the moment that that balance is shifted so it's uh, it's like early cyberpunk. Yeah. Well, uh, I look forward to kind of seeing more over the next kind of year or so as kind of things start to be revealed. But no, thank you very much for taking the time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your very uh, loud show. Yeah, awesome. No, that was great. Thank you. Thanks.